Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, Garl here and welcome back to the Forged Alliance Forever promotional series. I have a classic 3599 match for you guys and girls today, sent in to me by Shepard, so thank you to him. Once again, that's not a spoiler because he's not in this match. It is going to be between Lord Vader and Coacher, and it's going to take place on Finn's Revenge. Let's head on over to the game zone and see how these guys are going to get on. So, locationally speaking, down here we have Lord Vader in his classic red. He's going Cybrin and he's opening land to begin with. And he's actually getting the adjacency bonus from that first mechs, which is quite interesting. I don't know how much it was back in 3599. I know it's nowhere near the amount that it is today, but perhaps someone, uh, some walking SOPCOM lexicon can tell me exactly how much you got back in the day. I definitely know it was nowhere near. I mean, that's basically 7.5%. I don't know whether it was just uh, increasing at the higher tech now or, or how it works, but answers on a postcard, if you know that one, it would help us all, or just me, because everyone else probably knows it already. And he's getting a couple of uh, P-Gens afterwards, lining them up in different places. He's going second land as well. And up here in the green corner, his opponent is Coacher masquerading in his Finn costume as the number 42. I'm glad it is Kirch. I'm glad I know it's Kirch because I wouldn't have done had Shep not pointed it out. Thank you once again to him. I don't know what 42. Sounds a bit weird calling him 42. Just assumes that the guy chained next to his oar in Ben-Hur sitting next to Charlton Heston. But uh, it's a strange reference that not many of you will get. I'm certain of it. But the first hunter out from Lord Vader making his way up the right-hand side in search of some engineers could potentially get lucky if he crosses close enough to this one. The new rally point makes that almost a certainty. Flies past. That has been spotted. He's paying attention. He redirects. The engineer micros around to try and get a solution for a reclaim but doesn't manage it. And now, conversely, the Selen out for Kircher is making his way down the left-hand side, trying to find a decent place for Intel. I wonder if he's going to park his little robotic butt side on uh, one of these mass points and cloak up. But perhaps not. He's going to run into superior forces. Nice bit of micro there from Kircher. Dodges the first volley but doesn't last any longer. And now parking himself in the nook, another lab. That is the one actually that we just saw pick up that engineer earlier. He's going to sit there, lie in wait for any more unsuspecting engineers that are going to befoul his path. We will have to see if uh, Kircher is that unlucky. He's now got some engineers back in place on the right-hand side to try and pick up where he left off with the mass point collection. And now there's actually a mole in place, so that's going to give some very nice intel to Vader who will have spied this, doesn't know it's a Tham, who could be able to take him on any day of the week. A nice bit of micro there, saves that lab, and he promptly runs away because he knows that's something he can't take down. Unless you're with a mech marine and you're tag pebble, you generally can't take those down. But, um, oh, he's not so lucky on that second tank that he runs a cropper with, losing both of those units. Did try a nice little bit of micro at first, but he's managed to get a couple of labs around the back. You don't see this level of uh, lab play very often nowadays, even on these smaller maps. Generally, players like to get uh, into the more meaty units as quickly as possible. Have that first go at engineers, if they're not lucky, that's the end of it. But we're now seeming to be in the Mantis Medusa phase from Lord Vader. He's pulling back away from that fan, going to use his ACU to deal with that. He's moved right the way up the right-hand side. And at the same time, Kircher has moved his ACU to the left-hand land bridge, same place where he's rallying most of his troops. So we're not seeing a split here. We're seeing both guys move their ACU up in opposite directions, and they're not using their base units to secure the other edge of the map. They are following the ACU, and this is generally perfect conditions for a base trade. And they're also in pretty good times. They're both across the land bridge now with their ACU. Kircher may be a little bit further behind in terms of making his way across the map. He's grabbing that mech. So Vader just a little bit further ahead. Mantis going to break off a little bit and head towards the nook. There's an engineer that's very vulnerable there at the moment. And a mass point. Vader grabbing that mech as he goes and takes that out. It's generally important if you're on the assault to head up the right or if, you, if you're down here or head down the left if you're up here because this is where most of your 
mass points on your opponent's side are. There's Notice there's nothing on this side, so you can't knock them out and pick new ones as you go. And that's why you get this kind of rotational feel on fins. Generally, you don't see it quite as often these days as they tend to try and split their, or the pros at least, tend to try and split their ACU and their main forces. Thams and a Selen working for Kircher to take down that mass point in the nook. But now Vader makes a base fall of Kircher's main base, manages to take out that PD that was securing that section of his base from an advance. It's no longer there. He's got a decent mix of Mantis, Medusas, and of course his ACU in there as well. So he shouldn't have too many difficulties in taking this down at the same time we've got Kircher making base fall down this side there are now two auto guns instead of the one and Kircher's taking an awful lot of damage on his ACU which seems a little bit unnecessary for the moment but he's keeping the units away from the Zooies at the back which he needs to take down those those auto guns which he's managed to do he can now feel free to mount, advance into the main base there is an auto gun going up meanwhile it seems as though Vader has got the jump on Kircher's base He's got the reinforcing batch of units coming in now. I don't think there's going to be any more problems. You can see Kircher knows it's lost. He's paused all production in his facilities in order to conserve economically all of the mass and power that he's got. But uh, it seems to be a very similar state of affairs down here in Vader's base as well. And Kircher has even stopped using his ACU for any kind of destructive purpose. He started on power plants. You can see just the same as Vader alternating between reclaiming and building trying to get things online as efficiently as possible this is generally where the game is usually won on fins when you get yourself into a base trading scenario a player that can more effectively harvest your his opponent's base and construct a new one will usually emerge victorious especially when the cycle can sometimes begin again we saw not so long ago a uh, nice section of base trades on a classic match which Vader was also in I can't remember who the other opponent was but I did get that uh, casted not so long ago so you can check back it's the only other game I've uh, casted with Vader in it so if you check the title you should be able to see that but in the meantime we've got Kirchers now working on his first land factory getting that up he's actually slightly ahead of Vader which is quite interesting but he's moved Vader's moved his troops down is now going on a counter offensive feel free to go back to single screen for that these two start to work on getting their bases back in order but in terms he might have had uh, a factory up first Kircher but he definitely is behind on the mass points you can see all four of Vader's mass points are in place he's got one factory in place it's now just working on power before his second goes up meanwhile he's moving the majority of his mantis or all of his mantis and Medusa around the front of the nook Kirch is trying to counter, moving around, doesn't want any of these units getting in and disrupting the rebuilding of his base. But of course, while all the fight's going on down here, Vader's looking relatively unmolested up here at the top. He can just go about his happy, clappy business building as he goes. Nice little overcharge there, only picks up one. Unfortunate one, of course, better than none, but the overcharge never misses. It's terribly funny when it misses on the first pass. You see it come around and zap back. Don't see it too often, but it's always amusing. Now Vader's units, knowing he can't deal with that ACU, are going to have to maneuver around. Of course, this is a slight problem for Kircher. He has to keep his ACU on the move to defend against these units, whereas all of Vader's time and energy from his comm is going straight into building up a new base sensing that something is wrong Kirch is actually on the move so he's not going to sit in his base and just base build he probably senses or he must sense that he will be behind at this point it actually looks like he's going on the attack a little bit and now he's changed his mind he's had to move his comm back sensing the threat on the left hand side he knows he needs that firepower to defend he doesn't have enough build power to produce an army that can effectively counter that without causing any kind of critical loss at this point but he is going to move up with a small proportion of troops up the right hand side all thams no zoos in the mix which is kind of a shame one or two could have helped him in taking down some buildings at range keep him away from that commander but now we've got quite a big engagement kicking off between this man group of mantis and thams from Kircher luckily for Kircher he's got his ACU in the mix that will help keep Vader's forces at bay 
what have we got down here? So we've got one, two, three, four land factories and one, two, three mass points. That seems to be a quite a lot down on what we're seeing from Vader. We'll take a look at Eco, slow it right down so we don't miss anything important. Vader sitting on plus 11 in terms of mass. Kircher sitting on 9. So not a great deal of difference because they're talking about such small amounts. But he's definitely ahead. He's also got four factories in place and he's now started his ACU on the move. He's probably going to come down here, pick up these mass points. But if he gets in here and can start harassing Kircher's base, this could be all over for him. Finally, the last unit looks like it might be about to go pop up here for Kircher. He's keeping it alive, running for the coastline, but of course, it's not an aquatic device. He won't be able to flee any further than that. Last few Mantis catching up with him now, and that will be the last unit. But there is a Zooey, one random Zooey, just going on a trek on this right-hand side, trying to get in around the back of Vader's base. Could potentially do some damage if he gets in here. He could take out this hydrocarbon. You know, look at the uh, minimal amount of power on the grid for Vader. That could cause some issues. Of course, one Zooey take quite a while, a few volleys to take that down. Not actually ideal. But now we look like we're getting another little cross. These guys not wanting to engage each other. In fact, they just don't know where they are. They haven't got the intel because there's no infrastructure left. It's got a healthy group of units moving forward as well up north for Kircher. It's not just Vader. So Kircher having recovered nicely from that pressurized harass while he was trying to rebuild his base. He's even got some air units in play. A couple of bombers that might go a long way to deal with this. So you can see indeed that Zooey is waiting to move in on that hydrocarbon. Indeed there he goes. And Kircher makes baseful once again with his commander back at his old original base. That forces Vader to engage at the same time. So we'll go back to split screen as we go for another attempt at the base trade. See what's going to happen on this one. I am absolutely on the edge of my seat. Vader moving in behind the body of his troops. Whereas Kircher leading his very much. It's going to be much of a muchness at this point. You can see some point defense going up in the middle of Vader's base. Not so in the center of Kirch's. He's moving some on the far edge of his base. I think that just comes down to where the build capacity was stationed. Is that a ghetto gunship? It looks like it might be. But there are some interceptors out on the field for both teams. The first pass is completed for Vader through Kirch's base. He has managed to deal with that point defense that was going up earlier. Another factory about to go down. I think he's got the jump on it. The question is, will Kircher be quick enough to reassume control of his old base? Overcharges coupled with some Zooey fire take out that auto gun in the middle. Lord Vader spamming up T1 P gens as fast as humanly possible. Changes quickly to deal with that Zooey and Tham that was left there. Bomb away from a bomber going overhead, getting some nice AOE on those units. It is all go, so it looks like this could potentially be successful base trade number two. As we pass the 15 minute mark, can't believe the amount of action that's happened already. Of course, this is 3599. This is pre-FAF, so we have no information about these player ranks. They didn't have player ranking like that back in the day. They did have some ranking, but it wasn't the same situational ranking that we've got in FAF. But you can guarantee that, equivalently speaking, these guys would both be over 2,000 player rated players. Probably more like 2,100, 2,200 back in the day. Kocho, of course, still playing today. Finally, that last factory goes down of Vader's. Kircher working on power at the moment. So we'll look at how the Ecos stack up now that the trades have gone down. Nine mass for Kircher, four mass for Vader. So somewhere there must be some mass points. We've got these mass points on the left-hand side for and the right-hand side for both these guys. But uh, it must have been actually Vader bottlenecking power. Indeed, there you go. And that's why it's so crucial to get power online first, which you can see that's what Kircher's doing. Get that power in order, it won't hamper your mass. And it's not always a great deal of mass you're talking about. You're losing 
effect is proportional, but when you have so little mass to begin with, that small amount of mass income is crucial. It can't be afforded to be lost. We go back to single screen again as the second base trade is now completed and these guys work on getting those bases back in place. Mass points going down at the four. So now Kircher will be hurting for mass income. I imagine he's down to three mass. Vader sitting on nine. Much healthier. And that's with him bottlenecking power as well. But that should be about to change. We've got an engineer coming in here to capture that mass point. Which he manages to do. That now goes into Kircher's hands. Still a bunch of build capacity on this side for Vader on reclaim missions. A little bit of a face-off on the left land bridge happening now between groups of Thams, Mantis, Medusas and Zooies. Very nice play indeed. Back and forth. Coach are actually retreating, not wanting to overextend at all. It's a nerve-wracking time though, you've got to understand that for both these guys. It's a limited amount of intel, except perhaps for Vader. How is he doing on his power? Has he got his power back up? Yes, he has. And that radar station that hasn't gone down yet has been quite crucial for the moment. But I think it's about to go. Perch are about to get vision on it. There it goes. Such tinfoil structures, the radars. And still Kircher yet to reassume his base four mass points. Vader also only just starting work on them that's how much work you have to put in at the beginning to get those power gens in place when you're on a rebuild it's a completely different scenario to the opening where you have all of that stored mass and energy in place you really need to think very laterally about how you reconstruct and now Kircher coming back over the left land bridge you can get the drop on these units of course they've lost their intel now so they're not going to have that advance warning if they run into the ACU they'll take definitely more losses than they want to make and there's an opening on the right hand side for Kircher coming across the right land bridge now virtually nothing on the right hand side Vader's going to have to draw his ACU away from rebuilding his base and come and defend and now that new radar come online he's about to lose it again but that will have given him a short burst of intel Vader stops building with his ACU and moves forward to try and deal with this horde of spam on the right hand side from Kircher. He's also redirecting that group of Mantis that's come in on from the left land bridge to the back of his base so he can move left or right as and when he needs it. But it's quite a precarious situation for Vader. Two groups of units from both sides. He needs to be really careful about where he places his units. If he loses too much economically that will be game past the 20 minute mark Vader coming in to deal with this horde of units now does manage it but at the same time Kircher attacks from the north Hasn't taken anything out too critical just lacking slightly in numbers ACU didn't come in with the pack Kircher stayed off slightly he's further back that's quite interesting I wonder if that's been done on purpose or that's just where the build capacity happened to be but Kircher has moved his base over further to the left. Perhaps concerned about any counter-attack on the right. It's too tough to say without asking him. But lots of reshuffling of forces happening now from both teams. Zooey's making their way into the water defensively something that they can do. We've now got some bombers coming in from Kircher as well, taking out a lot of Mantis. There's no Sky Slammers in the mix at all, so he's completely defenseless against this play. He hasn't got any air factories in place. He did have one landed interceptor up here, but that's been taken out by land units. So switch up to air from Kircher could be golden. He's just decimating these Mantis Vader gets his ACU in amongst these units. Now we're seeing a group of Sky Slammers produce masses of them, in fact, to help deal with the bombers. But they're not currently flying over the main base where the Sky Slammers are. They're north of the Nook, working on these groups of units. 
getting popped off as they stray over on this side, but as long as they stay this side for the moment, they can continue to damage these units. All the while, Kircher is moving on from different angles. He's even got the group of Zuis around the back. Look at how unmolested his forces are at the moment. This could be real trouble for Vader. Finally, Vader kind of condenses his units into one homogenous group, and that really allows those Sky Slammers to afford the best protection for his units. I think that's the last of those bombers. One more bomber circling north of Nook. A couple more coming in now. Which uh, used to be a little bit careful. Doesn't want to get caught with his ACU. He has got three stars on his comm in terms of veterancy. Vader in amongst this mix will slow it down to regular speed because I'm feeling this could be quite crucial how this battle turns out. Replicators everywhere. Go my replicators. Kocha looking potentially like he's running out of units. Of course that's as you would expect being this close to Vader's base. All of those reinforcements are ready on tap. More coming in from Kirch. He's actually made a push on the right-hand side as well. He's quite close to taking down a factory. and something at this point that Vader can't afford to lose. Does manage it. And another one's gone down there as well. So Vader down to four factories. Getting harassed from land and air. But still, Kircher not been expanding too much. He's not been investing in expansion. It's all been kill 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 he's operating off five land factories and one air factory so Vader is behind a little bit but predominantly what he's behind on is map control he must be starving for mass taking a look at what he's on he's still on nine mass whereas Kircher has redeemed himself he's sitting pretty on 22 that's a pretty significant advantage more build capacity, more mass, generally healthier all round. And now Kircher is cycling his forces right past Vader's ACU. He's forced to bring back a whole group of units and he's really thinned out a lot of those Sky Slammers. There's not nearly so many on the field as there were a moment ago. Bomber's having a lot of success in the sky again. These bombers have been really key to Kircher's positioning in this game so far. And bit by bit, you begin to feel that this game is going to go only one way. It'll take a miracle at this point for Vader to get back in this. He's focusing pretty solid on the commander. I wonder if at, at this point he's just thinking, I need to draw... But there's a, not a lot of chance of that. Vader's down to 8,500 HP. Whereas Kirch is sitting pretty on over 13,500. Absolutely brutal engagement from Kirch. He's ingressing continuously down this left flank. He's got bombers coming in over the top. Just don't see any way for Vader out of this. He looks like he's semi-backing off towards the water, but if he doesn't keep his ACU in it, it is going to be over very soon. Sudden stemmed tide of units coming in. It's because he's upgrading his air factory to T2. Probably going to work on some gunships or fighter bombers. I guess he feels like now's the time to do it, and there's... Very little power left in the base of Vader. Looks like two badly beaten up T1 power gens. And as I say it, they go pop. So he's operating off the ACU's generated power. And that's it. He has to back off towards the water. Loads of bombers coming in all over the place. Gets his feet wet. Gets underneath just in the red. Just sub 3000 HP. And that surely is going to be game. We knock that back up to plus two. The Bombers now go to town on what's left of his base. There are some Sky Slammers in amongst that group of units. Not much though. He just needs to finish off those three factories. And that will be the end of it. And indeed, here we go. 
Vader knows it's over. He comes on board, grabs a little bit of a veterancy upgrade. But taking an awful lot of fire left and right from Zooey's, from bombers. There's a gunship coming now. He was forced, in fact, onto the land thanks to a torpedo bomber. Has to go back into the water again, surely. But he probably resigned to loss at this point. 2,800 hit points. And just stand still for a moment. He must just be like, it's done, it's done, it's done. Boom! Very nicely played Kircher. I thought for a minute Kircher was getting himself behind on the base trades. But not the case. He advanced with his commander at the right time. While Vader was stuck in his and it yielded map control. Kept the conflict down here at Vader's base. Allowed Kircher breathing room to expand. And he just funneled troops down that side continuously. It was the right decision. Probably in hindsight, Vader could have gone for another base trade up the right-hand side, but decided to make a stand. What a game. I hope you enjoyed it, guys. That's it from me for this week. I shall be returning on Monday with a vengeance. But as always, guys, in the meantime, stay well and stay safe. This is Gal signing out.